Father, let some word that is heard be yours. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, So this one time my wife and I, um, this is back when we were uh, church planters in New York City, Uh, we went out with another couple that we like to hang out with, they were also church planters there, and uh, we went out to a place called Shake Shack, not a fancy place, burgers and shakes, but uh, the one in Manhattan, we went to the one that's like right by the Natural uh, History Museum, so it is mobbed, like getting a table there is like getting a table at the fanciest restaurant that you can imagine, except you can't make reservations. But we had a system. We got there, uh, we got everybody's orders, the fellas were going to get in line to get the food, the ladies were going to go, you know, kind of stalk people and try to make them feel uncomfortable to get them to leave a table so we could, you know, sit down. So my wife tells me what she wants, and I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, 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 and she's like, Chris, are you listening? And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, we go get in line, we order the food, we come back, they successfully shamed somebody into leaving the table, and so we all sat down, we're eating, we're talking, we're having a good time. But I start to notice that my wife is like a little irritated. Uh, She's sort of like huffing and puffing over there, and it's escalating, right? And, and, And then I start to realize she's not irritated at me, she's irritated at my buddy. And then she just snaps, and she's like, dude, quit drinking my milkshake. And they'd both been like reaching off and taking sips out of this milkshake. Now, I need to pause. I just realized when I was prepping this morning, this is pre-COVID. People used to share things like milkshakes. Do you guys still share milkshakes? Are you, are you allowed to do that? Yeah. Will the, like, I don't know if someone will come stop you, like slap it out of your hand, like, no, don't do that. But, so like the idea that you would share a drink wasn't that weird, but they're, you know, both taking sips out of this milkshake. And uh, she goes, dude, stop. I think she said bogarting quit bogarting my milkshake. And uh, my, my buddy was like, oh, that's, that's my milkshake. And my wife turned to me and she was like, Chris, you got me a milkshake, right? And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm, uh-uh, no, nope, didn't get you a milkshake. So she was getting real mad because she, in her mind, my buddy was just reaching across the table and drinking her milkshake, which... That could be like a little irritating. But all the while, it was actually his milkshake. And he was being totally cool about the fact that she was reaching over and taking sips out of his milkshake. And in fact, when this all came out, my buddy is such a sweetheart that he was like, oh, I just was glad we were such good friends that you felt like you could drink from my my milkshake. (laughs) Meanwhile, my wife is getting like real mad. She loves when I tell this story, by the way. Um, So... But here's my point. Nothing changed. The external, so four people at a table, one milkshake, two people drinking from the milkshake, nothing changed. But suddenly, the whole situation was different for her when she realized that I messed up and did not get her a milkshake and that he wasn't taking sips out of her milkshake, she was taking sips out of his milkshake. The only thing that changed was what she was thinking inside her head. Imagine that. It really makes you wonder how much of this thing that we call life actually comes down to what we think about it. How much of it is what's really happening and how much of it is what we think about what's really happening. This is what happened to Paul on the road to Damascus. He was called Saul at that point. He got a new name because of this experience. And just so that you can understand the situation here, Saul was a great guy. He was the best. I mean, he was the most respected member of community that you could ever hope to be. He was a a participating leader in the strictest version of the faith. I mean, he was like he was like those super amazing Christian people that are like kind of extra about it. Like everybody would have thought that this was a great guy. This was the guy who was like Sunday school then Sunday worship, then come back Sunday evening, and then go to the Wednesday service and also have a small group. And if the church needs you to like fill communion cups, you're going to do that. I mean, he did all the things and he was like leading the youth and he was really knowledgeable. I mean, he knew the scriptures forward and backward. He had studied the theologies and he had kind of stepped into the role of protector of the faith. So he was always looking out for like, well, that isn't right. No, 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 no. That's kind of culty over there. Or that's not what the Bible says. No, no, no. And he was always like guarding the sheep against the wolves. Everybody in the community, top to bottom, everybody, the criminals, the priests, 
everybody would have said, Saul is the example of what you should be if you're following God. And he was dead wrong. And he was dead wrong because of what he thought about God. And what changed on that road, the epiphany that Jesus gave him was what Saul thought. What Saul realized was that not only was Jesus God, but if Jesus is God, then that means that God is like Jesus. And the change, his thinking, changing the way he thought about God was such a profound experience that it changed his name. He changed from Saul to Paul, and he became the Apostle Paul, and he penned like a third of the New Testament, some of which we're going to look at this morning. Now, I think that begs a question to us today. Is there any chance that I need to, that we need to, that you need to change the way that you are thinking about God this week? Is it possible that there's some way in which God is like Jesus that you need to come to a fuller understanding of? And here's why this matters. I mean, everything rides on this. Everything flows out of what you think. Everything flows out of what you think. What you think influences your facial expression, how you talk to people, how you feel. You change the way you think, it can actually change the way you feel. It certainly changes the way that you behave. What you think can change your relationship with every single person that you interact with. It can change the way you feel about people you haven't seen in years. What you think certainly can change your relationship with God, as it did with Paul, which means it can change your future, and it can even change your eternity. And if you'll stick with me for a couple of minutes, I'd like to try to give you an example of how what you think can not only change your life, but can change other people's lives and even change the world. But I want to be clear, I'm not just talking about what you say you think, as important as that is. What we say we think is important. You know, I say I think Jesus is God. I say I think God loves me and that Jesus has forgiven me and that the Bible is God's word. And I say I think all these things, and that's, that matters. But this is bigger than that. It's not just what you say you think. It's what do you actually think about throughout the day. That's what makes the difference. And according to Paul, the man who had this huge change of thought on the road to Damascus, it really matters. Listen to what he wrote to the church in uh, Philippi. This is in Philippians 4.8. Paul penned these words. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is Paul writing to the church in Rome in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. You do that. You do that. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Are we doing that? Are you thinking about what's pure, what's admirable, what's noble? And I don't just mean what you say you think about. I mean throughout the day. Do you dwell on what's excellent and praiseworthy? Do you take thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ? Or do you just let your brain think whatever it thinks and just accept it like, well, that's just what I think? I don't know if you know this, but you don't have to. You don't have to accept the thoughts that go through your mind. You don't have to agree with the thoughts that go through your mind. You can actually take them captive and make them obedient to Christ. Easier said than done. Let me try to give you some help. Here's how you do it. You can't stop thinking something. I don't think it's possible. The classic example is, don't think about pink elephants. Stop it. And everyone is. It's at least a flash in your mind. You can't do that. You can't just resist, resist, resist. Uh, famous psychologist Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. And I think it's true. Don't resist negative thoughts or untrue thoughts or anxious thoughts or doubtful thoughts. Don't judge them. Don't beat yourself up. Don't feel bad about them. Just observe them and let them float away and replace them. Replace them. Replace them with the truth. 
Replace them with something that God would want you to think. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you three ways you can do this, and then a, a bonus fourth in my concluding story. Three ways. Think, forgive me. Forgive me. You start to think a real negative thought, a real anxious thought, a doubtful thought or whatever. Just let that float away. Don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You know, you don't have to own that thought. Let it go. And then think, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. And then replace it with the truth. Choose to think about the truth. God, forgive me. I know I'm feeling anxious about these things coming up, but you always take care of me. I know that you're going to take care of me. I know that you always provide for me. Uh, This has happened before. I feel anxious about something, and then it always works out. So I'm going to choose to believe in you. I know you're there for me. After what you already did for me, I know you're going to be there for me in this much smaller thing. Forgive me. Replace it with the truth. Um, Bless them. Bless them. Jesus said, bless your enemies. I wonder why. Was he just saying stuff, or was there a reason? Bless them. You know, uh, you find yourself thinking something negative about someone, or listening to gossip you shouldn't have let yourself listen to, or whatever, and you find yourself thinking a negative thing about another person, say, God bless them. Or someone treats you badly, really, pushes your boundaries, or, you know, cuts you off in traffic, or whatever. God bless them. And I like to modernize this. Literally, in my mind, I'll be like, in my mind, I'll be like, "I, I hope you win the lottery. And I try to mean it. I try to imagine them winning the lottery, right? I hope somebody that you haven't seen in a while tells you that they love you today. You try doing this. Try doing this with someone that you really can't stand to be around or someone who's really done you wrong. Just think to yourself, like, I hope, I hope you get really, really good news today and mean it. It changes everything. So forgive me, bless them. I love you. This is my go-to if I don't know what to think. And I'm saying I love you to God right? So I could be in the worst situation, like pain, ugliness, stress, trials, the worst situation. And if you'll just take captive of your thoughts and God, I love you. I love you. I'm so glad that you're with me. You're incredible. You will be shocked what that does because here's the real irony. You change what you think and it actually has the power to change your life and to change the people around you. So I had an experience like this um, not too long ago. Uh, It was like three years ago or so. I was in the uh, sauna at the local YMCA by myself. And uh, I was alone in there in the dim hot. And then this this really old lady came in and sat down right next to me. This was not a high point in my life. But we're there, just the two of us, and she turns to me and she says, and I quote, I don't think black people and white people should intermarry. What? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I was so stunned. I was stunned speechless. This is like, she didn't say hello. Good morning. I don't think black people are, she just opened with that. That was like a hard open. And you know, questions popped into my mind. You know, first question was, what time is it? Like, what century is it? Intermarry? I hadn't heard that word in like 20 years. Uh, Second question was, do I look super racist? Like, do you, you look at me, you're like, that guy's racist. He's down a clown. I I could, let me just float this by that guy. So instantly what rose up in my, I hope I I was like, gosh, instantly what rose up in my mind was, you know, I'm going to cut her, you know, I'm just going to go in on her, you know? I'm just going to... You guys say go off on someone here, right? In New York, we go in on people. We don't go off on people, so... I was going to go in on her. And, uh, you know, I had all my things that I was going to say, all the things that you're thinking about saying, and I can be pretty good with words when I want to. I mean, I taught in public schools in Harlem for a minute, so I, if I need to cut someone down, I can really do it. And I was getting ready to do it, but something about the glint in her eye gave me pause. That's what she wanted. That's what she wanted. So I was like, ooh, I gotta, be, I gotta be smarter than this. Now, sometimes, don't hit me wrong, sometimes just cutting someone down actually is the right thing to do. It might have been the right thing to do. If someone says something really sideways, like, but something about the glint in her eye, I was like, they would do nothing. It would do nothing. That's what she wanted. I'd get mad. I would leave feeling indignant. I would tell the story at a move event three years from now, <laughs> make myself look good, whatever. Uh, but she would just go on about her life looking for some other person that she thought would, I don't know, I don't know what she was looking for. So I, I just paused. 
And I was like, I don't know what to say. What could I possibly say? What could possibly get through to a person like this? Really weird scene. And then I prayed, here's your fourth one. Help me. Just, God, help me. Help me. You know. If, there's, if there is anything you could say to this person to get through to them, God's the one who knows what it is. I said, help me. And instantly, I thought of my cousins, which is crazy that I didn't think about my cousins before this. But I just don't think about them that way. But my dad's aunt married a black guy, great guy. They had kids. My cousins look weirdly like me. So if you want to know what I look like with like Barack Obama's skin complexion, that's what my cousins look like. And I just thought of my cousins, and I was like, oh, my aunt and, and my uncle intermarried, whatever that means. And I was, like, oh, I was like, okay, God, this is good. So what do I say? Well, I'm going to get one sentence. What do I say? What do I say? And I was like, got it. I just paused. I said, are you saying that the world... Oh, no, no, no. I said, my, my aunt, my white aunt married a black guy, and they have two beautiful children, are you saying that the world would be a better place if my cousins did not exist? Yeah, that didn't come from me. That came from God. And there was the most awkward pause you can imagine. And then she said, I'm not making this up, she said, well, well no, I'm, I'm not saying that. And now we're best friends. We hang out all the time. No. <laughs> Never seen her since then. I don't know what happened to her. But don't you think maybe that got through? I think if anything could have got through, maybe that got through, right? Change the way you think. Change your life. Change the way you think. Change the people around you. Change the way you think. Change the world.